In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. First of all, let me appreciate you for dedicating and observing a Sunday to support breast cancer and cancer awareness in general. I'm thrilled and I'm proud of serving a congregation that thinks and is aware and responsible to the suffering of thousands and hundreds, hundreds of thousands of our sisters who have been diagnosed with breast cancer. And we are indeed grateful for the progress that we have achieved in the field of cancer treatment. Much has been done, and especially in the area of breast cancer, we know that science, medical science has advanced so that healing is possible. And the, the, many of our, our sisters, our mothers, our daughters, and our friends have been able to get back their lives. And for that, we are thankful to all those who are involved in the research process and above all, to God who is the source of healing. It is said that the well-being of a society depends to a great extent on the health and well-being of its women. In other words, how a society is, is reflected how a woman is treated in that society. And I think it is empirically true to a great extent. If you look at our societies, we see that it has often been directly proportional to how women are, have been treated in those communities. But Recent research and studies have shown that in spite of the advances made in science and the general progressive nature of our culture, our American culture especially, we do have some areas of concern. Our Western society continues to witness discrimination and violence against women. For example, we think that often violence is, especially against women, is seen only in certain countries, what we often assume as backward or, or, or culturally or economically backward countries or developing countries or, as they used to say before, third world countries. But we know that is far from true. Many feminist critics, many feminist writers and those who work for women's rights continue to argue that that is not the case. We do continue to face several issues of violence and discrimination against women. And among those, we know that domestic violence is an ongoing form of violence against women. And it is often so subtle and so indiscernible that we don't even identify it, we don't even acknowledge that it exists, we don't even know that it exists. It's a, it is one of those forms of violence that is taken for granted. And while we do have laws to monitor and protect women to fight against these injustices, feminist critics have pointed out that what we need is more awareness and thoughtfulness about how we all embody and practice the deeply embedded injustices within our social and political systems. In other words, any form of injustice for that matter, and especially gender injustice, cannot be encountered simply by enforcing laws. Although, yes, they are indeed important. 
We do need them. But we also need a sort of transformation and reformation from within among the individuals of a society. People need to be aware of what they are thinking, what they are doing, what their assumptions are, what their, their intentions are, or sometimes things happen even without any intentions. Things happen even without any form of awareness. And so we need to be more critical. We need to be more thoughtful about why we do certain things that we do in our society. So therefore, transformation, reformation is integral for social change to happen, especially with respect to gender justice. And as we know, transformation of the individual and reformation of our structures, our social structures, are central to the teachings of Christianity. In the gospel lesson that we heard this morning, we see this being emphasized very strongly. Often the story of Zacchaeus is seen as a story about a sinner who was received by Jesus, was embraced by Jesus, and who ultimately, most possibly, made it into heaven. And yes, probably that is true. That's, that could have happened. But what is also interesting about the story of Jesus meeting Zacchaeus and the change that comes over him is that it reminds us that following Jesus is actually a challenge. Yes, to know Jesus, to accept Jesus as your savior, to worship Jesus, to accept Jesus as the son of God is a blessing, yes. It gives you life, yes. It gives you eternal life, yes. But it also a demanding task. It is a challenge. It demands becoming mindful of our mistakes, our shortcomings, our blind spots, and our, the injustices in our society and within ourselves. And this is precisely what Zacchaeus does. When he invites Jesus to his home, when he comes close to Jesus, when he comes face to face with Jesus, he realizes that there is something wrong within him. And there is something wrong happening in the society. And remember, Zacchaeus was no ordinary person. He was the chief of tax collectors which means that he was extremely corrupt. Or rather, he was the head of corruption. He was the head of exploitation. And perhaps most of the wealth that he had accumulated was by unjust means, by exploiting poor and vulnerable people. And here he is face to face with Jesus, and he says, you know what, there's something wrong here. To be close with Jesus is not just about getting into heaven. The story of Zacchaeus reminds us, but rather about deep and sincere self-introspection, self-analysis, self-criticism that pushes him towards repentance and transformation. He therefore realizes that he cannot continue to live his life the way he does, the unjust way of life that he does, if he was going to be a follower of Jesus. The story of Zacchaeus reminds us of the responsibility towards our fellow sisters and brothers when we become close, when we come close to Jesus, when we become his followers. By sharing his wealth and resources, Zacchaeus became a true disciple of Jesus, a true follower of Christ. Of course, this is not true, really. If we go back to the Old Testament, especially the first lesson that we heard this morning, the book of Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, it reminds us that to, to worship Jehovah, the God of Israel, to be the chosen people means to live justly. In the first reading, we hear the prophet Isaiah reminding the people 
exhorting the people that more than religious traditions, more than customs, more than rituals, more than any religious practice, observation of the festivals and innumerable number of customs that they had, what ultimately matters is to cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, and plead for the widow. And therefore, to be a follower of Christ is to be responsible, is to, is to change, is to be transformed, is to repent, and to live justly. Often the church has forgotten these teachings of Jesus. We have emphasized so much about getting into heaven, about looking down on other people perhaps, about claiming our own privileges as a church, that we have forgotten in history our responsibility. But the scripture readings have constantly reminded us that to be a worshiping community, to be a follower of Jesus, is also to be a caring community. In fact, to worship God in Christ, revealed in Jesus, is to care and pray for our sisters and brothers in need. And this is precisely why we support and uphold each other through our support for breast cancer and cancer awareness. We do it not simply because others do it, not simply because it's done in the society, but in some sense, they do it because we know that we have to do this, because this is what God has called us to do, to care for our sisters and brothers, especially those in pain, those in suffering, those in distress. And we show our commitment for justice by standing in solidarity with all those who are hurt by domestic violence. Again. We do this not because it is some sort of a political agenda or some sort of, a, as we often say, a liberal agenda, which is ridiculous. It's actually a biblical agenda. It is Christ's agenda because that's what Christ always demanded of us. What That is what the scripture always has demanded of us, that we stand for justice and we stand with those who are facing injustice. My dear sisters and brothers, May we continue to be a community that cares for the well-being of our sisters and brothers, especially those who are in pain, those who are in sickness, those who are ailing, those who are being hurt by injustice, by violence in our society. And may our love, may our witnessing, may our caring help others to know and experience the love and hope and life that is offered in Christ Jesus. Amen.